You read the title right. Fleeing the Complex is my favorite Henry Stickman game. Completing the mission is an incredible feat in of itself, but it just never hit the same for me because of how broad it was. Obviously, I had to juggle a lot with needing to tie together infiltrating the airship and fleeing the complex, and it handled that task well for the most part, but I just find fleeing the complex so much more compelling because of how in-depth it feels. So, uh, allow me to explain every reason why fleeing the complex is my favorite Henry Stickman game. For starters, the original version of Fleeing the Complex still holds up pretty well visually and brought some much needed gameplay changes to the table. Previous entries like Infiltrating the Airship were still fun, but were painful to try in 100% because there was no easy way to just jump to different parts of the game. Fleeing the Complex solves this problem by introducing the map, which allows the player to return to any option screen they want to and even tracks how many fails they've gotten for each one. This makes grinding for achievements far easier, but the map isn't the only appreciated addition that this game brought to the table. Quick time events have never been my favorite aspect of this series, but marking each one with a timer at the top of the screen helps the player lock into whatever situation they're in way faster. The same timer is also used excellently to build tension during the slower quick time events, like at the end of Presumed Dead. Options slowly pop up as the timer tick down, which makes the already tense scene that much more suspenseful. Fleeing the Complex also deserves credit for making the choices relating to the story your own. Henry begins the game inside a waiting zone, and the player must directly choose their way of escape, which has more interesting ramifications on the story. For how much story choice is praised in infiltrating the airship, it's a lot more shallow than a lot of people are willing to admit. In infiltrating the airship, for example, the choice to break away from the government and steal the ruby is something that just randomly happens in a cutscene and is not a direct result of the player's choice. In Fleeing the Complex, however, the entire narrative is determined by your first option screen. Want to escape headstrong, underground, solo, or with a friend even? Then go for it. Fleeing the Complex's more straightforward nature also allows for a stronger focus and brings a consistent level of quality with it. You explore every facet of the wall without it feeling redundant, and there's just enough paths to create that feeling. Sure, areas such as these are barely touched upon, but given that the goal of fleeing the complex is to escape instead of breaking in, this is fine with me. Completing the mission does a good job at exploring the top hat launch site and the rocket, but everything else just kind of feels way less interesting. Every path in the train is commonly considered to be some of the most forgettable in the series, and while I like the character drama presented in Top Out Civil Warfare, I feel like the path greatly needed to be reworked, as it feels so anticlimactic by the end. The only path that reuses the airship that I like is Revenge, which is completely fine because it allows for an isolated confrontation with Right Hand Man and Reginald. One thing to note about both of these examples is that the character drama that makes them interesting comes as a result of the player's actions in fleeing the complex. Top Hat Civil Warfare is a result of Henry using Ellie to escape and then abandoning her, and Revenge happens because Henry calls the Top Hat clan to help him escape the complex, only to be betrayed and seemingly killed by Reginald because Henry hadn't proved himself to be a competent leader for the Top Hat clan. Each path in fleeing the complex also provides a unique way of escape. Convict Allies feels reminiscent of government-supported private investigator, but Charles isn't physically alongside Henry in that path the way that Ellie is in Convict Allies. It's hilarious watching these two criminals try to work together in the stupidest ways possible, leading to some of the most iconic fails in the entire series. The inverse of this path is Ghost Inmate, where Henry abandons Ellie and flees undetected. While this path is the weakest one in the game in my opinion, it's still interesting because it shows off Henry's ever-elusive nature, and it's used for some character drama I mentioned earlier. The government and Top Hat Clan also make a comeback in this game, and I'm just surprised at how naturally they're worked into the story. Henry gets access to a phone and is able to call one of them to come and pick him up, so either side is only at the complex because Henry calls them there. It would have been so easy for Puffballs United to just stick Charles or Reginald somewhere at the complex, but thankfully that isn't how things went down. Anyway, the International Rescue Operative Path is fun and brings some great fails to the table, even going as far as to give Charles his iconic catchphrase. I got the perfect plan. This is the greatest plan. On the flip side, the Betrayed Path sees Henry call on the Top Hat Clan for help, but getting thrown off the airship by Reginald at the last second. Up to this point, this was the only ending in the series where Henry canonically died, which is fascinating. 
The final path in the game to discuss is presumed dead, which is probably my favorite one in the game. Henry rushes out of the waiting room, gets to the surface, steals a truck, and then finds himself on the side of a cliff as his truck slowly leans more and more over the edge. The warden then comes over to push the truck over the edge, but Henry makes it out by doing absolutely nothing. This path is unique not just because it's composed of quick time events for the most part, but also because of how it breaks the formula. The speech from the warden and music also add a lot to the ending of this path, so I think it's about time that I finally talked about Dimitri. Dimitri Petrov has been the warden of the wall for 50 years, and we learn a lot about him by the end of the game. For starters, he calls for Henry to be captured regardless of whatever outcome infiltrating the airship brings. This isn't very noteworthy for the paths where Henry remains a criminal, but the fact that Henry gets his record cleared in half of that game's paths and still gets brought in is what makes Dimitri interesting. The wall seems to operate by itself, and Dimitri specifically seems to seek out the most dangerous of criminals to be locked up at the complex. He even makes direct mention of not wanting any more common thieves in the trailer, and is only convinced to bring Henry in once he sees everything that he's done. This establishes an ego for Dimitri, which comes to the forefront in Presumed Dead and Convict Allies. Just pay attention to how different his dialogue is when Henry is trapped and alone compared to when he thinks Henry is dead. I have to say, Henry, I'm impressed. Really, I am. You're the first person to escape the wall, but this is the end for you. You've got two options here, Henry. You stay in there, or you return with us back to the complex. What's it going to be, Henry? Hmm, well, that's just too bad. Alright, everyone back to work. I will not forget about this. This is coming out of your paycheck. Dimitri's nature changes from playful to angered after he thinks he's killed Henry, showing that he wants his prisoners to believe that he is the ultimate authority and that their lives are just expendable to him. He isn't just some tired warden, he lives for the thrill of control. Funnily enough, control is the exact thing Dimitri loses in the Convict Allies route after Henry sets all the prisoners free. His speech in this path is so much more agitated and personal because Henry has taken away what Dimitri values most. Well, if it isn't Henry, there has not been an incident here in 50 years, and the day you show up, this happens. You are going to regret everything. He's so angered by this outcome that he actually sends in and accompanies his entire squad of tanks in the top hat recruits and pardon palace path of completing the mission. This path takes place presumably right after the events of Convict Allies, meaning that Dimitri isn't even attending to the wall because he's so focused on paying Henry back. He eventually gets his moment, but is too focused on his revenge to approach Henry with any sort of strategy, leading to his demise. You've taken everything from me. My reputation is ruined. Now I will ruin you! Dimitri and the Wall should have been relevant in way more paths in completing the mission. I understand that he wouldn't have a way to track or even know Henry escaped en route aside from Convict Allies, but he could have at least been worked into paths like Capital Gains to make them less forgettable. When you combine all of these aspects, it's pretty easy to see why fleeing the complex is the Henry Stickman game I return to the most. Completing the mission and infiltrating the airship are great and definitely have their iconic moments as well, but the more personal paths, engaging villains, and iconic fails lift this game higher for me. I can absolutely understand why someone would disagree with me, but this video is opinionated to begin with, so it's all good. I'd actually be curious to hear what y'all's favorite Henry Stickman game is in the comments below. And before I leave, I want to plug my own Henry Stickman fan game for a minute. Defending the Mall is a Henry Stickman fan game that will be slightly larger than Escaping the Prison, with a focus on plot and character more than anything. While the game is being developed in my spare time on Scratch, it will have a widescreen game jolt port once it is finished. You can actually watch the trailer for the game right now, which I would encourage you all to do. I've been BlurtFan, thank you for watching, and have a blessed day.